most embarrassing radio, <laughs> most embarrassing radio moment. I had a producer once who had arranged, this is when I was at Radio 1, as a kind of a birthday surprise to get Naomi Campbell to bring me a cake. I didn't actually realise it was Naomi Campbell. I thought it probably was Naomi Campbell, but the, the studio door opened and this woman came in, very glamorous woman, bringing me a cake. Uh, the first record I ever bought was a 45 single and it was Congratulations by Cliff Richard. I think I must have been about 10, something like that. It had been selected for the Eurovision Song Contest and the B-side was High and Dry, which was the runner-up uh, in the song selection competition. And I think it cost me seven and six. I've probably got it somewhere, but no idea, but that was the first one. I mean, the idea of only listening to one song for the rest of my life, I mean, that's just a terrible, it's a terrible thought. It's like eating the same food for the rest of your life. But if I had to choose, then with weary predictability, it's gonna end up being uh, Born to Run from Bruce Springsteen, just because it is, as David Hepworth, the journalist described it, lightning in a bottle. It's just one of those extraordinary records. <laughs> first gig I went to, which I paid for, was Paul Simon at the London Palladium, 1975, £5 for the ticket. I was at school in Worthing, came up on the train afterward, after school, got to the London Palladium, saw Paul Simon on the tour, thought it was fantastic. I loved it. It was the Jesse Dixon singers uh, were playing support and doing some gospel backup for him. Had to miss the encore because I had to get the last train home because it was a school night and everything. But Paul Simon on the live rhyming tour, that was my first concert and I loved it. It's always tough. My, my guess is, I would say, my favourite artist is probably Paul Simon. So this is going back to my earlier answer about the first concert that I went to. Because the first album I bought was Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Water. But I have everything that Paul Simon has ever recorded. I've interviewed him a number of times. I do think he's a genius. I don't think he's going to be making any more records. He has kind of retired now. But I think for sheer consistency and quality, plus the ability to surprise you with different musical styles from uh, recording artists around the world, I think I would say Paul Simon. I'm fortunate to have interviewed I think it seems most people uh, who are famous at one stage or another. I guess the standout one, again, I'm sorry if this is going to make you groan, was interviewing Bruce Springsteen for his, for his memoir. And the reason is, before you go away, the reason is because he doesn't do interviews. So he, he was doing this because he had his book out and so therefore he was on a, like a different promo schedule. But normally if he has an album out, he doesn't promote it at all. So the chance to interview Bruce was fantastic and I loved every minute. Most embarrassing radio, most embarrassing radio moment. Well, you know, I would say probably I had a producer once who had arranged, this is when I was at Radio 1, as a kind of a birthday surprise to get Naomi Campbell to bring me a cake and it was live on the radio and I didn't actually realise it was Naomi Campbell. I thought it probably was Naomi Campbell, but the, the studio door opened and this woman came in, very glamorous woman, bringing me a cake. I think, I don't want to say Naomi if it's not Naomi, and my producer didn't say anyway. So that, I mean, she was one of the most famous women at the time in the world. So you could probably say I was uh, an idiot, I think is the right word.